The following is a paid program by Zola Levitt Ministries. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Zola Lepp presents Shalom Chavarim, hello friends. Welcome to our program. We're coming to you from Israel, from the Mount of Olives. We love bringing you our program from the place that God has chosen to be his resting place. You know, right now it doesn't look like it because the, the nations are, are shaking, but we testify that God's will will be done. And that's what this program is about. It's about the prophecy of God and yes. his word. And unless you understand Israel, you don't understand prophecy. It's true, we've been bringing you series of pro on prophecy series since the 1980s. Behind us you can see a Muslim mosque on top of a crusader church, on top of a Jewish temple, on top of covenant land. This is the land of covenant and this is the place that we want to speak to you from because all the nations are beginning to flow up to Jerusalem in preparation for the return of the Lord. Yeah, and it's in this series that we specifically ask you for your gifts of funds. If you would remember us at your year-end giving, it allows us to bring you location, 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 teaching from Israel. Yeah, so let's begin with a look back at our series, The Times of the Signs, which is a prophecy series that really brings us up to date as to what God is doing now and looking towards the future. Let's go there now. You know, we're trying to bring to you some of the major events that are happening in the end times and how they relate together to set up for the return of Yeshua, for the coming of Messiah. I consider Jesus' Olivet Discourse the most important prophecy in the whole Bible mm -hmm. because he's the creator. He, he knows everything and he knows the end from the beginning. He says, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender, and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it's near, even at the doors. Assuredly, I say unto you, this generation, the generation that sees Israel coming together, it, to me, it's, it's thrilling to see how close we are. You would think the rebirth of the nation Israel, which I, I do believe was when the world hourglass took its final spin. Yes. And I do believe that we are in the end times as that being one sign. Mm -hmm. But the thing that really makes it more clear, I think, at this point, Miles, mm -hmm. is that when you look at all the pro uh, prophecies that are to be forthcoming mm -hmm. in the last days, they're all converging right now. Wow. It's not just one sign, but they're all signs. And it's very clear that there will be a government in place, you know, controlled by the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. And Daniel 7, verse 23 says it will devour the whole earth. And sort of the way I, I look at it is it's an ambition that Satan has had ever since the Tower of Babel, mm -hmm. where he, in essence, prior to God's intervention in Genesis 11, he was ruling through a man named Nimrod. Mm -hmm. You know, Nimrod's name in Hebrew actually means rebellion or right. revolt. And Satan was ruling Nimrod, and Nimrod was ruling a, a, what I would call a one-world structure. Mm -hmm. And God disrupted it because of its potential for evil through the confounding of the languages. Mm -hmm. And ever since that disruption, there's always been this satanic desire 
to get this system back. And biblical prophecy tells us that it will be restored uh, subsequent or after the rapture of the church, mm -hmm. where Satan once again will rule over a man. We call him the beast or the antichrist, mm -hmm. but he'll be a Nimrod type figure and he'll govern the whole planet. So here we are, the Valley of Megiddo, with the good signs that the Lord is coming soon in the midst of all the difficulty, in the midst of all of these signs that are dangerous and hard to understand, the good news is that God is a God of restoration. And just as he has restored Israel, restored the people of God to their nation and is now awakening the church to its root as being grafted in to the Commonwealth of Israel, God is now going to prepare us to be able to thrive in the midst of the difficult years ahead. And that's what this program will help you do. This series is going to equip you to thrive in the midst of difficult times. This is the time of the signs. What you just saw were some scenes from Times of the Signs. It was a very popular series. You know, when I had a chance to interview Tim LaHaye, who just went to heaven, uh, he said something very profound to me. The end of our shoot together, he leaned forward with a very warm smile. He said, you guys are doing a great job. Zola would be very proud of you, and he shook my hand. It was a really touching moment. It was quite an honor to be able to be with him and sit with him. And you know, God is doing something in the earth in Jerusalem today. God's time clock began in 1948 when Jewish people came back to the land and something began to move forward in rapid pace, the restoration of Israel. We love showing you what God is doing. Without your help though, we can't continue to bring you these programs from the land with the people of the land. And so would you consider to just give us your best gift? If you've never thought before that you would uh, like to donate, we would love to have your partner with, partnership with us. Yeah, that would be great. You know, I was just thinking that our gate series, which you're about to see, it's called Jerusalem, Ancient Gates, Future Glory. And it was such a, um, had such an impact that the Chinese underground church saw it, contacted us in San Francisco area, and then connected with us so that we were able to bless them, which is a blessing for you, because they are missionaries to the entire world coming back to Jerusalem. So let's go now to our Gates series, which had such a profound effect on the church around the world. My heart was glad when they said to me, let us go, let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem. Our feet will stand in the house of the Yes, let us go, let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem, the gates of Jerusalem. We started with the Dung Gate, which is in the southern end of the old city. We went around to the Zion Gate, to the Jaffa Gate, which is the westernmost gate, and then to the New Gate, to the Damascus Gate, on to Herod's Gate, last week the Lion's Gate, and today we, we finish up with the Golden Gate, also called the Eastern Gate, Messiah's Gate. We're here in Jerusalem. Behind me is the Mount of Olives. To my right, the Zion Gate. You know, Psalm 87, verse 2, tells us, Achev Adonai Sharei Zion. The Lord loves the gates of Zion. How much more so right here at the Zion Gate. And you can see behind me that this gate was won by a hard fought battle. Absolutely. You know, Jerusalem was known as Zion when David conquered this city and also when the Israelites took back the city. In 1967, the Israelites came and took back the city of our Lord through this gate. And behind me, you can see the literal bullet holes. Tourists love to pass through the gates of this remarkable old city. It's like walking through a time tunnel back to the period of biblical prophets and kings. 
We started out with 40 countries represented at that first feast. We've continued sponsoring the Feast of Tabernacles celebration for Christians each fall. That quickly grew into Israel's largest tourist event. We've been getting between five and 7,000 Christians uh, for 30 some years now, year in, year out. Even when there's trouble, they still come. Yes. They're very committed. They're not just fair weather friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, our crowds now come from up to 100 countries. We are here on the eastern side of the Temple Mount the famous and oldest gate, the Eastern Gate, the Golden Gate, the Mercy Gate. It has many names, and this is the eighth gate, isn't the it? The eighth gate, the gate that I was talking about that shut up until the King of Glory comes. He's going to come on the Mount of Olives. He's going to touch down his literal soles of his feet. The earth is going to quake and split open. Water's going to gush out, and the throne is going to appear. Yeah. He's gonna set himself here, come through this eastern gate, just as he did the first time, he's gonna come through this again. My heart was glad when they said to me, let us go up, let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem. Our feet will stand in the house of the Lord. So let us go up, let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem and we'll say peace be within your walls and with all who delight in them and we'll say peace be within your gates the gates of Jerusalem and we'll say peace be within your walls and with all who delight in them for we know that's where his praise awaits so let us go up let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem let us go up let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem Yes, let us go up, let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem, the gates of Jerusalem. Those were some scenes from Jerusalem, ancient gates, future glory, and we're right in the center. What a blessing to have Marty Getz do the music. He's been with us before. He's been with the ministry, right. doing soundtrack for so many years. What a blessing he is. You know, there's nothing like being in Zion. Zion is the oldest name for the city of Jerusalem. David named it Zion because it was a mark place. It was a set place where God chose to bring his voice out of Zion. And it is our privilege to bring you Zion forever. You know, God has a plan. Man tries to get his way over God's plan, but God sits in the heavens and laughs. Amen. And that's how God wants us to be. He wants us to be seated above what the enemy's trying to do or man's trying to do. So Zion forever will give you a glimpse into God's eternal plan for this view that's behind me, the Temple Mount. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a lamp that burns. Zion forever. Shalom Aleinu Bial Kol Yisrael. We're hearing the sounds of celebration. Behind me you see a picture of the temple, and we're at Hamakom, as close as we can get to the place, the place where the Holy of Holies stood. It is the most sacred place in all of Jewish life, and it is here where people are coming today to celebrate the bar mitzvahs. It's such an awesome time. It's such a time of joy and remembering the good things of the Lord and the promises to Israel. In fact, they're singing that all of Israel will stay 
and will be here. And God has established this as the place for the Jewish people to dwell now and forever. This is the city named after David himself. But we first hear about this city in the book of Samuel as the fortress of Zion. There's where we are first introduced to this city. So first and foremost, this is Zion. When you talk about Jerusalem, you're talking about Zion. Now Zion becomes synonymous for the whole country later on, but Zion originally starts here. And it is the fortress of Zion that David conquers when he comes here approximately the year 1000. What we're looking at behind us is the destruction era of 586, when, of course, all of Israel goes to Babylon. Not far from the Temple Mount, a remarkable sifting project has taken place for the last 11 years. In 1999, the Islamic authorities began to build an underground mosque. They removed 10,000 tons of rubble bursting with archaeological wealth regarding Jewish and Christian history. A few years later, the Temple Mount Sifting Project was created to uncover these archaeological treasures. I spoke with the co-director of the project and he told us about the groups that visit the site. And now the teacher is assigning them into pairs and yes. they're going to start, each pair will take a, a bucket yes. with a uh, sifted that was already dry sifted but now is soaked with water yeah. uh -huh. and they're going to pour the bucket on the screen yeah and start washing the material. Looking through. And later on, they will, after that, they will start uh, scrutinizing it. You know, it's so important for our viewers to see the next generation yeah. understanding Israel. Think about what Zola started 30 plus years right. ago, but it's important the kids get this, right. isn't it? Right, right. Well, when you, t when you handle the things of the, of the first and second century, I mean, these are like the rocks are literally <laughs> speaking to these people about their history, their yes. heritage, and the, and the temple that was here. It's exactly. so exciting to see their faces as they find these finds. It's amazing. Yes, it is. You know, it's so important for us, too. We want the message of Christianity through Jewish eyes and the relevance of the state of Israel. We want it to go to the next generation. It's a passion for us. We have children in college, one just graduated. It's so exciting for us to see kids understanding the importance of Israel, the importance of their Jewish heritage. That was our series, Zion Forever. As we look back on Zion Forever, it was our privilege to bring you also in 2016, our first time in Auschwitz, where we did a series called Beauty for Ashes. That was a tough one to do. You know, we tried to bring a sense of the horrors of the Holocaust, but the hope that came afterwards in the miracle of the founding of the new reborn state of Israel. Right. And uh, you told me it was going to be difficult to do, and you right. were right. I didn't think that it would be, but it was a very touching and uh, powerful time for us. It's so needful in these days to remember right. and to not forget and to remind our next generation yes. of the horror and because there's Holocaust deniers still today. Exactly. So yeah. that's why we felt it was so important to do that. We took the verse, Beauty for Ashes, from Isaiah 61. That is the very scripture that Yeshua read when he was brought to the synagogue in Nazareth in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. We wanted to bring that sense of out of the graves of Europe that this incredible arising would come and God would give us beauty for ashes. And certainly the reborn state of Israel is just that. It's a blessing to all the earth. So let's go to some scenes from Beauty for Ashes. I will console those who mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of Adonai, that he may be glorified. Here in Birkenau, we see the remains of crematorium number two and number three, which were destroyed. In January 1945, the retreating Nazis destroyed them. From 1943 through November 1944, these crematoria were designed to burn at least 1,400, perhaps even 2,000 corpses per day each. For the sake of efficiency, 
The Nazis used deception to keep their victims calm during this process. The trains stopped at the platform where the selection process occurred. Those who were not, quote, fit to work, unquote, the vast majority, were led into the two huge buildings adjacent to the platform. Signs about registration and accommodations were posted in many languages. So the people calmly took their clothes off in the changing room before moving on to the next room where they believed they were going to get a shower. An ambulance drove up and delivered a container that was actually hydrogen cyanide gas used to murder everyone in the shower room. A half an hour after the screaming stopped, Jewish prisoners were forced to transfer the corpses upstairs to the furnaces for cremation. The ashes from the crematoria were used for fertilizer. When the Nazis had no more ground, they dumped them in nearby ponds. Two survivors of this process were 10-year-old Eva Moses and her twin sister Miriam, who arrived in Birkenau in March 1944. Because they were twins, they were used for medical experimentation. This is the number that they engraved into, it's dot by dot burned into my flesh and skin. It means that they wanted to reduce me to just that number but they could never do that. We're here in Mahane Yehuda, the Jewish market. It's colloquially called the Shuk. And really it's a scene of uh, unparalleled Busyness, especially now during Purim, it's a time of celebration. You might see some costumes. We're here, and one of the stories of Israel that has to be told is the incredible power of the reclamation of the land. Well, the arts were restored, the language was restored, mm -hmm. that the people themselves had been restored. It's been said that the Jewish people, through the grace of God, or the light of God, because God caused them to be a light to the nations, yes. have taken curses and made them into blessings. Yeah. Even the malaria yes. was, like, was like a curse on the land, mm -hmm. and the Arabs thought that they, could, they couldn't do anything with the land, so it was there that they allowed the land to be sold, mm -hmm. and it was through the ingenuity of the Jewish mind, mm -hmm. and I believe the light of God coming upon them to, to show them how to rehabilitate the land. Yes. They restored the land, they revived the land. Yeah. And we remember in Ezekiel that God prophesies over the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. And you see that once the Jews come back mm -hmm. and they marry the land, the land begins to bear fruit. Most of all, we want you to know that mm. it's time for us to stand mm. and to be that light, mm. to be that blessing mm. to those around us, yeah. to walk in that message of love. Yeah. So remember that Israel is not about the bad news. It's mm. about the good mm. news of the gospel. It's about the beauty. Mm. It's about the restoration. And mm -hmm. it's about the miracle of the new birth mm. that happened here. Beauty for Ashes caused us to reach deep to remind people that although the Holocaust led to the state of Israel being reborn, it did not cause it. Because this state, this place, this homecoming is a fulfillment of prophecy that goes back 4,000 years. It's a promise, a covenant to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we're living now in the fulfillment of that covenant. You know, we don't shy away from difficult subjects here on Zola Levitt Presents. In fact, this year we had a chance to interview some various people on various subjects, and let's go look at some of these interviews right now. Uh, the time clock uh, is Jerusalem. That's God's time clock. And uh, the nations of the world are still obsessed with the dividing of the, the land of Israel. Uh, let's put it this way, the, the, the nations of the world uh, the leadership of the world wants to make Judea and Samaria an Arab state. The, the issue is not Israel, and I think Americans should wake up to reality. Reality is that Iran develops capability in order to 
advance their mega historical goal, domination of the Gulf and the Sunni Muslim world. In order to attain that goal, they have to remove what they perceive to be the mega obstacle, which has nothing to do with Israel. It's the U.S. military power projection. Everybody today is worried about Israel for a lot of reasons, but we don't worry about Israel because that's God's problem. He that keepeth Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. We pray for Israel because we're instructed to. I tremble for America. The America that we used to stand for freedom and liberty is a thing of the past. I, I might say the myth of the past. Yeah, people will say, you know, America's Babylon the Great, or America's, you know, the unnamed nation in Isaiah 18, or the young lions of Tarshish, or these different places. And I look at all of those, and I find America missing, which some would say, well, America's missing just because a lot of other countries are. But I think us being the greatest power that have existed, has existed on Earth, the fact we're not mentioned is significant. I think it means something has happened to America, and power has shifted uh, to Europe. Uh, to the Far East, to the Middle East, and I look at some of the different scenarios of how that could take place. Uh, in this country, what we see happening, we're trying to divide the land of Israel. We're going against God. God says, I'll cut you into pieces. For you cut Israel up, I'll cut you up. We see our taxes, the amount going in is falling. People are out of work. Unemployment is rising. Our uh, tax collections are going to be down, I think, 18% this year. We see deficits, over a trillion dollars deficit. You can't keep taking in less money and spending more money and survive. The dollar is declining. People see gold going up, silver going up. They're going up because the dollar is, is getting to be worth less. So. All of this impacts us. I think there will be an economic collapse. The scripture teaches that in the latter days that uh, Jerusalem will become a cup of trembling. Uh, in other words, uh, it, it would be a burden to the world. Uh, I really believe that some of the, the hatred we see toward Israel, uh, some of the, the angst against them is, is really biblical. I mean, uh, we know that they, the, the world wants peace. Uh, they blamed everything on Israel. Uh, saying that if uh, we can just only stabilize that region, if we make peace in Israel, the world would be a better world. But they don't understand that the only way Israel experienced a lasting peace is when Messiah sits on that throne. We want to thank you for your prayers and your faithful support. This was a challenging year, but it was a profound year. Oh, it's a wonderful year. We love bringing you the series from Jerusalem. There's so many things that we've been able to bring. Not only the Levitt letter, Miles, but you can re you can review these messages on YouTube. Yeah, we're on every outlet that's possible. We try to be available to you on Facebook, at our website, levitt.com. And we just are so blessed to be able to bring you these up to the minute profoundly historical yet prophetic messages about what God is doing in the earth, especially as we prepare for the coming of Messiah. Wow, it's a joy to be here, but we couldn't be here without you sending us. You know, it says in Romans, how shall they hear unless they're sent? And we want to thank you for sending us. There might be somebody out there that has never considered giving to Zola Levitt Presents, so we would just love to challenge you to partner with us so we can continue to bring these messages from Jerusalem to your home. Yeah, and we always like to end our program by reminding you what Psalm 122 verse 6 says, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.